What fan theory do you 100% accept as true? Not sure if this counts, but Donkey from Shrek being one of the kids from Pinocchio who turned into a donkey is pretty mind-blowing. Edit. Thanks for the award. First one ever. Kevin Malone, if not actually a asterisk genius asterisk, is certainly asterisk much asterisk smarter than he lets on. Clearly he's lazy, and gluttonous, and blah blah blah, but after the merger with Stamford, and it's revealed that Martin had served time, Kevin realizes that he needs to give plausible deniability to any sort of financial maleficence that the accountants have been doing, and flanderizes himself in front of the camera. Occasionally he slips up, and reveals himself to be something a math genius, and has to backtrack, and play it off as some kind of food-based idiot savant. It's how he was able to afford ownership of the bar at the end of the series, I'm sure he made a bit just cashing in all those free drinks, but asterisk actually asterisk enough to buy a bar? I don't believe it. The reason each it is always sunny in Philadelphia episode starts with a date and time is because they you're all testifying against each other in court. The Empire Strikes Back, Admiral Ozzel is a rebel spy. Everything Ozzel does in his brief bits of screen time is to the detriment of the Empire. When the probe droid finds the rebel shield generator, Ozzel tries to dismiss it as smugglers before Pete speaks out of turn and gets Vader involved. Later, Ozzel orders the fleet out of hyperspace to quickly, giving the rebels plenty of time to activate the aforementioned shield generator that Ozzel knew about. Clumsy as he is stupid or rebel sympathizer who gave his life to give the Alliance as much time to evacuate their base as possible, I side on the latter. Beavis and Butthead have fetal alcohol syndrome. Marty McFly develops the inability to back down when called chicken in the second movie, and on because in the first film, he creates a timeline where his father has confidence, changing the parenting style of his own background. Jessica Fletcher killed all those people and framed others for it. No way that a lady just happens to be involved in a murder every week. That Loki was controlled by the Tesseract more than he let on. His eyes glowed multiple times, and he shed a tear when Thor tried to talk sense into him. Miguel and Tulio may not be gods, but the armadillo that follows them around absolutely is. It's just helping them out because they saved it from being eaten. In Disney's Ratatouille, the old lady in the beginning of the movie living in the house next to the river is the food critic, Antonego's mother. In the flashback scene, where he eats the ratatouille you can see similarities of the house from the beginning, her face and I think the bridge. In the final two-parter of Capaldi's run on Doctor Who Missy makes a joke that the doctor's real name is Doctor Who. This isn't a joke and Missy is being truthful. The doctor originally called himself Doctor Who, but got embarrassed by it later in life shortening it to the doctor to sound better. This is why the actor playing the Doctor is usually credited as playing Doctor Who. The town from Footless is the same town from Tremors. The ban on dancing wasn't a puritanical attempt to control the youth. The town elders were aware of the graboid threat and banned dancing out of the fear that it would cause rhythmic vibrations waking up the creature sleeping below the town. Kevin Bacon's character in Footless stayed in the town, growing up to be his character in Tremors, at which point he has to try and contain the danger he inadvertently released. The Jetsons and the Flintstones are living at the same time in a dystopian future where the Yurhaves you live above the clouds and the Yurhave nots you are stuck on a wasted earth. The signs include that Flintstones celebrate things like Christmas and other holidays which does new make sense and the Great Gazoo Alien appears in both series. The trolls from Frozen kidnapped Christoph. In classic Scandinavian mythology, trolls would take infant babies and replace them with their own. If I remember correctly the human parents would then raise the baby long enough to realize it was a troll and the human child would be put into slavery by the trolls. When Christoph and Sven are discovered following the trolls, they are found and that one troll says I think I'll keep you she meant it. That's also why we never hear anything about Christoph's real family, considering all of the detail and research just needed, while making Frozen I 100% believe this was intentional. 
James Bond's primary purpose is to be a distraction, to keep attention off the spies who actually spy. Villains and other spies know him, he rarely takes an alias, he makes his presence known early on and keeps messing up operations for the villains, but other spies have already infiltrated their ranks and work, while Bond does as much visible damage as possible to keep the others safe. Little late to the game, but the theory is that the Kyber crystal in Lucia's green lightsaber is the same one from QUI Gonjiniers. After Kenobi defeats Darth Maul with his Master Year's lightsaber, he would have kept it as a keepsake, despite rebuilding his own saber. It was likely he would have retrieved it and kept it with him after the Order 66 attack. After the Empire takes over, they destroy all artifacts and memory of the Jedi in their purge of changing their history, and most Kyber crystals go towards powering the Death Star. Because of this, any lightsaber crystal would have been very difficult for Luke to find after he loses the Skywalker saber. But we know he returns to Tatine to complete his new lightsaber, likely returning to Ben Kenobi Year's home for components, where he would have found Qui Gon Jinn's lightsaber and recycled its crystal. The monsters encourage the cowardly dog are regular people, but see monstrous from Courage's perspective, since he's cowardly. Also they live in the middle of nowhere, because his owners never take him out so that's how he views the world. Red Alert 1's Allied victory results in the Red Alert 2 thirds universe. Red Alert 1's Soviet victory leads to the Tiberium universe. Semicolon. Debunked by the writers themselves I like, but that's how it'll always be for me. Every Star Wars planet is like a quarter the size of Earth how else does each planet have just one biome? Glinda dropped Dorothy's house on the Wicked Witch of the East, not the Tornado, and uses her to gain control of Oz. One of the first things Glinda tells Dorothy is that she killed the witch. They praise her, so she'll accept it, and when the Witch of the West comes along, who killed her sister? Dorothy. Glinda then puts the ruby slippers on Dorothy's feet, but does not tell her that she can use them to geo home. Instead, she sends Dorothy to Oz in possession of objects that a witch would murder her for. Dorothy, being forced into a situation where her only salvation is Oz and her worst enemy is the queen inadvertently exposes the wizard of Oz as a fraud and murders the witch of the west. Now, who's left to rule Oz? Glinda fucking witch of the north. She used Dorothy as an expendable pawn to gain control of Oz without having to leave her bubble. And when Dorothy is done up having the two biggest powers in Oz, Glinda sends her home and makes her think it was all a dream. The real world in the Matrix movies is just another layer of the Matrix, designed specifically to appeal to people unwilling to conform to the normal Matrix. Humans in this outer matrix have confirmation of their belief that something was wrong and get to indulge in the fantasy of being a heroic freedom fighter against the faceless evil machines, thus choosing to accept asterisk THIS asterisk false reality. The anomaly of the one is that he's capable of rejecting asterisk BOTH asterisk realities, which is the reason why he had powers in the real world. Pokedex entries are written by young trainers. When a professor sends a bunch of 10 year olds out into the world to document Pokemon, of course the research can't be expected to be professional in the least. This is how we end up with the creepy legends of ghost Pokemon that might have been passed around as playground rumors or impossible facts like Macago being hotter than the actual sun. There's no reason why out of all the Pokemon professors, one of them couldn't have revised their dex information and correct the tidbit about Pidgeot breaking the speed of light or Gardev were creating black holes or Blazikens jumping over 30 story buildings. It's likely they leave the kids to their own devices without bothering to fact check, and kids, being kids, are going to exaggerate. The cases in Sherlock are all fake, orchestrated by his brother Mycroft, to keep him away from drugs. I 100% believe the two men accompanying the woman in the original Yerbla which project Yer planned and successfully executed a plan to murder her while they were deep in the woods. Too many factors point to good old fashioned murder than a supernatural occurrence. 
edit, whom referring to the characters of the film, not the actors, realized my language might be a bit ambiguous. I have one of my own. Buffy's mother Joyce's brain aneurysm occurred indirectly because of Dawn. Not through magic or anything directly supernatural. But she was Dawn's mother, and therefore she would have the most artificially created memories, conception, pregnancy, life, thoughts, fears, etc. This caused so much real physical change to her brain overnight, that it created real medical problems and killed her. This is never hinted at at all in the show. Rob Stark died twice, first in his own body, and second in Grey Winds. He had a chance to see era moments before his death. That the book Rory writes in the Gilmore Girls revival is the original show that explains why the characters are so different from the show vs revival miniseries. She years looking back at the past with rose colored glasses. Event Horizon is a prequel to the Warhammer 40k universe. King of the Hill, Dale knew about Nancy and John Ridcorn, but feigned ignorance. Both to keep his home life stable, and because he knew Joseph would be raised as his son rather than Ridcorn's. Willy one can knew what he was doing. There was no seat for Augustus aboard that boat. He knew Augustus Gloop would fall in there. Spoiler for American History X ahead. I don't yet know if this is a fan theory, but I always believed the boy that shot Danny was the younger brother of the guy Derek Kerb stomped and killed. That kid exacting revenge on his brother year's killer by murdering the killer year's brother speaks volumes in oh. It also ties in beautifully with Danny year's final speech about hate being baggage. So I always accepted that to be 100% true.